Thank you very much, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm just here to set the context of 5G and advancing 5G that we've seen over a relatively short period of time. We've always heralded that 5G has been the fastest generational change that we've ever seen in our industry. We now have 257 launches across 87 markets, supporting over a billion 5G subscribers. This is unprecedented demand for the high speed and low latency services that 5G clearly offers to the consumers. But we're talking about advancements here. What do we need to do next in the industry? And first of all, why we need to do that? We need to do that because we know generational changes brings further value, further revenue, and we're all in this room to make more money. We've seen through the different 2.5G, 3.5G, was there a 4.5G or was it just LTE? 4.5G and now 5G to 5.5G or commonly known as 5G Advanced. But it doesn't just take 5G Advanced and a, and a 3GPP release 18 release. It takes other building blocks to do that. And I think there are four critical 5G advancements we need to think about in the future that we can actually achieve here today. Along the bottom, we see 5G standalone. This starts to virtualize the network components so operators can think about delayering their networks and the activities in there. Then we have 5G Advance, which brings higher capabilities of those networks that have now been virtualized by 5G standalone. And then with all the demand that we are going to be seeing through the high capacity networks, we will need more bandwidth. And that can only come from 5G millimeter wave. And we're here today to talk about that. But those critical enablers and network capabilities need somehow to actually monetize them. An open gateway takes advantages of the operators delayering and exposing their network capabilities through industry open APIs and be able to create more value across our industries than we've ever seen before. To give you an idea of Open Gateway, which we also announced here at Mobile World Congress Barcelona, it's a collection not just only of operators but of industry players like hyperscalers and also industry associations to ensure that developers, we talk, telcos, talk to developers in their language of software code, commonly known as APIs. And it's the GSMA's aim to also federate that. So a developer only has to connect once to get an API, and that API has global reach. Think of roaming APIs. I mentioned some advancements as well that we're seeing through 3GPP's standardization work to release 18, which is expected around about June 2024. These advancements helped us with being able to support XR devices. It helps us with the uploads that we require from all the devices that you're showing in the room now, pointing at me, taking pictures, we need better and faster, more reliable um, uplinks. And lastly, systems that support passive IoT devices or very low power IoT devices through reduced capability of the 5G bearer. Here from the GSMA foundry, you'll see three case studies that we have uh, done to demonstrate the value and the, uh, and the benefits you can actually get out of 5G Advanced. I just want to go back one slide. I did forget to mention 5G Advanced is here today. 
Qualcomm launched the Snap, their new Snapdragon, I think it's the X75, but don't quote me on that. They launched it just a few weeks ago. And that has 3GPP release 17 advanced capabilities in it. So we can experience all of that today. We've been working hard over the last year on 5G millimeter wave to actually understand it. So the first port of call for doing that is what are the use cases? Where are we going to be able to use uh, 5G millimeter wave? And we see that it can be used in transport and subways. We can see that it can be used in Industry 4.0 and robotics. We can see that it actually can be used in virtual theatres. We see that it can be used in broadcast. And we can see, and there's clear evidence that you'll get to see today, that it's widely used in 5G stadiums. But there are the use cases. What's the impact to your networks if you think about deploying 5G millimeter wave? The impact is fairly substantial. You're actually going to get a total cost of ownership reduction when you're actually deploying this over traditional 5G over 3.5 gigahertz. There is value clearly to may be made on the bottom line. Interestingly, 5G millimeter wave is very suited to indoor, and it's always been a challenge to cost effectively deploy private networks, and millimeter wave gives us that access to do that. But there's some myths out there around about 5G. So with, with our partners that you can see on the uh, right-hand side there, we've created five informational white papers. Five, what am I saying? Three, I can only count three there. It's after lunch, sorry. We've got a fact sheet to simply explain how 5G millimeter wave can actually help and actually start to remove some of those myths about poor coverage and, and, and not, so, not so reliable technology or technology availability. Then we have deployment best practices which basically starts to actually answer some of those challenges and give solutions. And then we have the cover extension white paper, which actually demonstrates how practically you can put those solutions in place. And hopefully you'll hear about most of the content that are in this white paper today. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening.